Hello, I'm John Kilpatrick with Southern Sweepers and Scrubbers, and we're here to start training on the floor scrubbing machine. This and is this, John is our service manager at the shop. My name is Cole Webster. I'm the sales representative for the state of Alabama, and I'm here to run the machine as well. John's going to go through the technical applications of the machine as I walk through the demonstration. We're going to show you how the machine runs, uh, what the EC water module does to allow you not to use chemical and then we'll show you the daily maintenance and how the machine is uh, supposed to be um, kept up have the upkeep on the machine after you're done scrubbing what you need to do daily, main, to maintain it daily and keep it running for a very long time okay first thing we're going to do is we're going to attach the squeegee to the rear of the machine Cole go ahead and slide that on the arms and you'll tighten the two yellow knobs closest to the center you don't have to over tighten those, it's just finger tight. Attach a squeegee hose, the vacuum hose to the squeegee. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is to, is, it's in steps, step one, two, three, and four. The first would be to turn the key on, which you can tell the lights are already on, so the key is on. Next step is going to be to lower your, your squeegee. The next step is to lower the scrub head, which is the other pedal. And then you squeeze the handle and start moving forward. We're putting the, uh, installing a pad on the pad driver. Simply remove the center, center the pad over the hole, and then reattach the locking center. There you go. There you got it. That's in? That's in. All right, now the pad's attached. That's it. it just Magnetic. And to get it off, that's what the yellow button's for. The yellow button and then the knobs. Speak up, you're being the yellow button on the front is to, to release that uh, pad driver off the machine if you want to change your pad, flip the pad, clean the pad. It's that simple. Press the yellow button, the pad's off. All right, we're going to start by operating the machine. We're going to follow our four steps. First step is turn the key on, which the lights are lit up now, you can see. We're going to lower the squeegee, which is pushing the center pedal. Next, we're going to lower the scrub brushes, which is push down and go to the right. Pull the handle to you. And that starts the machine scrubbing. It's going to pull itself forward. You just kind of have to guide it. And you can see the squeegee against the wall, so it makes it turn all the way to the left. The squeegee should follow the center of the machine. If you're going down the center of this hallway, the squeegee is going to stay right behind the machine. It's going to recenter itself automatically. Yeah. All right, and that's how you, you scrub the machine, scrub with the machine. Go ahead and raise your scrub brushes up, and let's go through the operation and the cleaning of the machine. Alright, raise the scrub head. Gonna go forward to pick up the remaining water on the floor. And then raise simply raise the squeegee up using this foot. Alright, we're gonna now show you how to charge the machine. First of all, the, the key switch has got to be in the off position. Then you're gonna uncoil the wire the power cord for the charger off the back of the machine and take it to a 110 volt outlet and plug it in. That's going to start the charging process of the machine. And there's the machine charging now.
Okay, the green light on the panel indicates that the machine is charging. It'll cycle, and once the charger actually kicks on and begins its charge cycle, you'll hear the fan on the charger actually operating, so you know that this machine's charging up. All right, so after you finish operating the machine, you've drained your dirty water, you've drained the clean water, and the machine's now dry, one thing you want to be sure to do on a daily basis is to clean this filter out. All your dirty water that comes from the floor comes through this filter, so any debris, trash, rocks it picks up gets caught right here. So you want to make sure this is cleaned and, and put back in the machine. This little cage is actually a float shutoff. When this tank gets full of water, dirty water, it's got little ping pong balls inside of here that float up and block this off. And that prevents you from overfilling the tank, number one. Number two, filling your vac fan full of dirty water. So you need to always make sure that this is clean and also in place. And the next thing we're going to show is going to be the batteries in the lower compartment. Okay, now we're going to look at the batteries in the machine. We're going to check the, the water levels in that and just point out the EC water, how you want to flush that module out. So here we go. We'll open this tank. when It's, it's got to be empty of water. Otherwise, you won't be able to lift it. But here's your batteries. You have two 12-volt batteries connected in series, which makes this a 24-volt machine. This is your... EC water box and what this does it electrically, it electrically charges the water so this is a flush switch you can actually flush clean water through this if you have a problem with EC water not working you should never use detergent in this machine if you're using EC water this box is about a thousand dollars if you put soap in it you just bought it of course these hoses you just want to make sure that they're not broken or got holes in them, anything like that. So you just look at those conditions where you got this machine or the where well, you got this lid open. That is pretty much the maintenance of the, the machine. One of the good features about this machine is you've got a storage area on the machine for your charger cord. When you get ready to charge the machine, these two arms will actually roll back on themselves. So you can just pull the whole cord off in one unit. It's just a lot easier to do that. Put those back into place and just wind your cord up when you're finished. And you can lock the cord back to itself. There's a clip on the end of the plug that we'll get to here in just a second and show you how to, to clip that back on the cord. Here's the clip that we were just talking about to clip it back to itself. That way you should never walk around and be stepping on this or having it drag behind you. We're going to show mm -hmm. emptying the, the dirty water out of the machine. First thing you want to do is remove the squeegee frame on the back. It's just the opposite of putting it on. We're going to loosen the two yellow knobs that's closest to the center and remove that. And the only reason we're removing that is it makes it easier to get in and out of the closet door to drain it. There's a, a hook on the side of the machine where you can hang that for storage out of the way. Then to drain the, the tank, you simply pull this hose down, that's a ball valve, you just twist it and drain it into the sink. It's that simple. Okay, see with the squeegee off of the machine, it's so much easier to get it in that door without damaging anything. Now we're simply gonna pull the hose off the machine twist the valve and let it drain into the into the sink. Once you get that drained, this is a good time to open the top lid and rinse the tank. So if you've got any debris built up in the tank, the heavier debris, the solids, it's gonna go to the bottom. So you wanna get a hose and then rinse that out and let it be draining. Clean out your filter. This just simply pops off. There's the two balls in there that I described earlier that floats up and stops the vacuum. You want to rinse that and make sure that it's clean too. And to reinstall it, it snaps back into place like that. This lifts out so you can rinse it, clean it good, drop it right back into place, put the top back on, you're good to go. And it's that simple. When this machine's not in use, you just leave it parked. I recommend you leave this open 
so that the tank gets air. If it stays closed, you're going to start getting a funny odor. And that odor is going to be the bacteria growing inside of this tank. So you want to just keep that open. And it keeps the smell down. When you're running it, you're not smelling all that nasty smell. Okay, so you notice I've taken the squeegee off. And I'm, the yellow knobs on there, anything with yellow on it, that means this operator responsibility. That's just things that the operator can take loose. You can take this yellow knob loose and check to see if you have anything clogging your vacuum system here. If it's not picking up water very well, you could very well be clogged up right here. Dust, lint, uh, pop bottle tops, anything like that can clog this up. So anything with yellow knob is definitely something that you want to look at. The center, the two center knobs are the ones that attach it to the machine and they're yellow. The two on the outside is how you would change the squeegees. If you need to change or flip your squeegees, all your squeegees have four edges, four corners. You want a square corner on the floor. If you let any one edge wear more than 50% through the other, then you've ruined that other edge. So instead of having four edges, you're going to just be left with two. And, and that's, can, well, that's something we're going to take care of on the higher end, on the main. Right. In, in, in our PM, that's one of the things we look at is replacing the squeegees if they're needed that may just need to be flipped over. We'll flip those over if you, but if you're using this on a daily basis and it's not picking up water, it's leaving streaks, chances are you've got something on the squeegee blade itself. It's picked up a, a rock or a little uh, broom straw, something like that. You can just simply clean that off. Or maybe that you've worn the squeegee down enough that you actually need to flip it over. And that's where that, keep an eye on this. So by taking it off the machine and hanging it on here, you, you, you get a good opportunity to look at that squeegee on a daily basis. The other yellow button we have is right here, and that's to release your brush. When you push that, your brush will come off your pad, so you can change your pad. Again, that's something that when you finish scrubbing, I recommend you take that off because that pad's got water in it, and it's going to sit and drip until that water comes out. So if you'll take that out and stand in your mop sink, you won't create a big mess in your storage area just by simply doing that. It's, it's very easy to do. This is your, it, it just keeps it from splashing the water everywhere, that ring, and it comes off very easily to put it back on. You go oblong and it comes back over the hole. So that is pretty much all there is to maintaining this. This is where you'll fill your clean water. Okay, and now to fill the machine with water, you remove it here. And you, you simply take a hose and put water in here to fill your machine. On the back side of the machine back here, there's a hose that you can use to show how much water is in the machine. This clear hose right here is your solution. But you always it shows, tap water. It shows your level. It should always be tap water. It shouldn't need any, you shouldn't need any kind of detergent in this machine. On your scrub head, you have additional down pressure here, and that should be used very sparingly, especially on this tile floor. You really won't need it much. If you get into some of the ceramic stuff, then you may need it in high traffic areas, but you may also need a different pad also. And that's simply, you just pull it over and down for max down pressure. Raise it up and lock it back to the left. So this. This to lower it is down to is up to the right and down. Same with lowering your brush. You push down over to the right and then it comes up. And that lowers your scrub brush. So in summary, you can see this is a very simple machine to use to operate to maintain. If you simply follow the daily maintenance of keeping it cleaned out, keeping your filters clean, leaving the top open so you don't get any kind of odor, remove the scrub brush on it, and you, never use detergent in this machine. It has the EC water, which is the electrically charged water. It does the cleaning. So I hope you enjoyed many years of service out of it, and we'll see you twice a year to take care of it.